songs, lads. Where did those songs come from? I know, Tommy, that your mother, of course, <coughs> um, had a million songs at her beck and call. Uh, but but uh, presumably you grew up with music all the time in your house, did you? I did, yeah. I yeah. did all kinds of manoeuvres. Uh, in a pipe band, I played a piccolo and I used to sing with a pop dance band. The clipper tones. Clipper tones, how do you know that? I know all <laughs> these <laughs> You played piccolo with, at the same time as working in the garage. That's right. Yes. And I then went to work in a bar. And I was a, a correspondent for the Arma Observer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do anything for a dollar. <laughs> and that's about what I got. No. <laughs> that's right. And your mammy sang all, all the time in the house. Oh, she had all kinds. Well, she wouldn't have known a folk song from a hole in the ground. Yeah. She just sang songs and you'd hear her singing anything. I remember she died just a year ago this month, as a matter of yeah, fact, her. Lord mercy her. And yeah. uh, when she was dying, you know, she would sing anything, you see, songs that... Uh, you would want to hear and songs that you wouldn't want to hear at all uh she would sing if if uh, somebody a bit rebelly came into the house she'd sing a good orange song as well as she could and she could do it uh and if uh, she would sing the other ones but uh, a nephew of mine went to visit her and she thought she should do she was in her, on her deathbed in a hospital and she thought she should do something sort of modern for him so she sang alexander's ragtime <laughs> <laughs> ah, dear. <laughs> Irving that was Berlin the day before she died. Yeah, yeah, that was the day before she died. Dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear. Now, now, the other songs then, was there music in the Clancy household all the time oh, too? Yeah, was, yeah. Yes. My father was an opera buff. <laughs> and uh, then in parts of the family, there was an aunt of ours had a house where there was all sorts of courtigues, as they call it, you know, <laughs> singing and dancing. And it was one of those places with no electricity and a sort of a clay floor and but lovely music and lovely songs, and we learned an awful lot of the songs there. At least we heard them and we knew bits of them. Yes. We knew bits of a whole lot of folk songs. And later we were able to sort of put together and do some research and get the rest of the words. And very often we had to change them slightly because we were singing them in America. And there's no use in singing like, songs like about a peeler, for example. Mm. Didn't mean anything in America. Mm. Then we changed it to policeman. Mm. We were accused of corrupting the songs. And the first and time that I became aware of, of the kind of the universality of folk songs was I heard Burl Lives singing Froggy Went to Courtin' and He Did Ride. And my mother was down in the garden. It was a lovely summer's day. And I went running down to her. I said, Mammy, come up, fella, quick, there's a fella singing your song on the, the well. wireless. Because she used to sing, There was a frog lived in the well. Hi, ho, said Rolly. Her own, for she, she had from her own mother, you know. Mm. <laughs> and it, it, it was the first inkling that I had that these weren't just our songs, that they travelled all over the place and different people had modified them for their own. Mm. Ronnie, like how are you? Good evening to you. You're very welcome and, and the rest of ye. Oh, Ronnie, yeah. could, could you put into words what these fellas meant for you? Well, uh, the first week after I got married, Tom paid me rent. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a fiver. <gasps> Why so, Ronnie, may we I ask? I hadn't got the fiver. <laughs> and an awful lot of stories we could tell, but they didn't happen in coffee shops, so we wouldn't, they mightn't bear repeating. <laughs> and uh, not many good anyway. stories happen in coffee shops anyway. But, but musically, it, Ronnie, I was striving for. Musically, <laughs> <laughs> musically, could you suggest to us what they meant to you? Well, uh, I'd heard about them. Uh, I'd been in America. And I was singing in the gay theatre with John Malloy at the time. And uh, I sang, I got this terrible job. I had to sing, instead of playing records in between the acts of a play, I had to go out in front and sing songs, like long songs, like, uh, you know, uh, Rocks a Barn and things like that. You know, 22 verses, come back next Tuesday <laughs> for the rest of it, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and uh, I got this job. And I was jealous of these heads over in America getting all this ready for singing. And I was getting six pounds a week and having to pay readies out of it as well, you know. So anyway, I went to see them in 63 when they came here first, and it was great. And the first meeting we had with them was Barney and myself, and I don't think you were in the group, John, that time. No, no, it was only the parents. Um, <laughs> poor old Luke, Lord <coughs> Lord. I said, poor old Luke, Lord and my gentleman, all that, we're, we're all there and carried on. And we all arrived in Carrigan Shore, and this show that John Malloy was running, Dennis Franks was the tour manager. And we arrived in Carrigan Shore, and people were staying away from this gig in the hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Millions. And we arrived in Carrigan Shore and they were staying away even more than in the hundred. So we all went to Dunmore East, all the lads and ourselves. And Kieran Burke and I said, now we better not drink much today and account to this gig tonight, you see. 
Oh, we didn't drink much. That time we could drink us up. We had four pints each, I remember. So we all came back, and John Malloy was delighted we were all showing signs of gargle, you see, so he could close down the show and he wouldn't have to pay anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so Barney said, who was drunk? I said, <coughs> said I'll throw him up that thing, that pole. Was a, what do you call them things? Television, tele- television, 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 television mask. Television mask yeah. in the middle of the town. It wasn't television at that time. It was a radio <laughs> It was thing. an ESB. An radio. ESB pole. Yeah, yeah. And Barney shot, who was drunk? And Barney turned up to the top of it and began combing his hair in the top, you see. <laughs> By which time we'd gathered all the inhabitants of Carrick on Shore and Carrick Bag and the whole lot, they were all over to see us, you see. And Barney gets down and he wouldn't get down and he'd please promise not to arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> so we got down and both sides of the street were lined up and <laughs> clapping, you see. And they all tapped outside, so John said, you are all sacked. And we were all sacked, and we all went off the lads, and we had a few more. <laughs> <laughs> we went back to Carter's house here. Carter's, that's right. Yeah. 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 Carter's there, then. Would you right. ever do us a little bar as a tribute to the lads? Would you ever stand up there and do a sort of a attack? I go on, do. I go on, do. Try. I go on, do. Up here, lads. Up here, lads. Stand up here in the centre where we can see and hear you. Up here. Come on, no, d- here, here, here'll do fine. Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. Why not? Down there, that'd be that, anywhere around there. Give us, a, give us a shout or something. Give us one of the ones we stole from you. You know, they're, they're looking. They're leaving a Liverpool. Or... They're looking as if they weren't expecting it, you see, and they brought, they all brought their instruments. Why not grab these? Paddy down a separate spot. He might. Uh, well, Paddy, will you join in? Come on, join in here, Paddy. Come on, join in. Paddy Riley, ladies and gentlemen, just turn up and give him. Come on, join in. Come on, good, good, very good. Don't collapse. Fine. Very good. Oh, there was an hour of woman and she lived in the wood. We love, we love, all ya. Tommy Makem. All right then, now, where are we? Oh yes, I have to give another clue here, don't I? Is this the musical one? Oh no, it's not. No, this is number three. All right then. Number three. Oh, I gave... No, I didn't give three. I beg your pardon. No, I didn't give three. I beg you. Number three coming up then. Number three clue. All right, you ready? Here it is. I live in Britain where I have my home, but I'm really quite Irish, as you might have known. All right, that's number three. 
We'll take a break now, all right? And we'll come back to you in a few moments with the next part of the show. See you then. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. All right.